everyone, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Welcome back. The artist Monet once said that his garden was his most beautiful masterpiece, and I certainly cannot claim the same of my own real garden. I often cultivate more weeds than flowers, and when I plant things, they never predictably grow. So I'm quite grateful to have a medium that I have much more assurance and confidence in, and that's cookie decorating. Today I've created a cookie garden, and I love it because I've planted only flowers. There's not a single weed in there, and all the flowers are gonna last forever. They're never gonna go by. So today I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this arbor. Well, not exactly. There's a lot to it, from the teeny, teeny, tiny flowers and garden gates on up to the primary arbor structure itself. There's a lot here, so I'm gonna pair this video in half. In this half, I'm gonna concentrate on the arbor structure, the ground, and the fencing and then putting a lot of pre-made elements, all the flowers and other things on it. In a second video, following this one, you'll get details on how to make the garden pots, how to make the brick walkway, how to make the slate, how to make the sundial, and how to make assorted flowers that are appearing in this particular project. Hopefully that'll make it more digestible to you. And of course, if you don't wanna do a lavish 3D project like this, which is perfect for a centerpiece, say for a summer garden party or a wedding, you can pair it back and just take the design elements here or the techniques, parse them up, apply them to a single cookie and have something much smaller and more manageable in terms of time. But I'm gonna take it to the sky's the limit because that's the kind of person I am. So let's get started and talk about the cookies needed for this project. So basically this is a 10 cookie project, excluding the garden pots and things. For the basic structures, just 10 cookies. So each arbor is composed of Four fence posts, they're gonna be formed into two halves, that one that sits in front of the other. So two fence posts, these are about three eighths of an inch, I believe, four inches tall, but I'll have the exact dimensions in the video description. Do go to the video description for project dimensions because oftentimes they're more accurate than what I say on video. Each of those will be topped off with a little arch, if you will. And again, I've got a repeat of that, which will sit behind the one in front. And I've got two smaller posts. I think these are about two and a half inches tall, and these are gonna form the anchor post for the fence that connects to the arbor. We've got the ground. This is a six by eight inch cookie. So not tremendously huge. And you can build out beyond it with other cookie vignettes like the small one here, or just by building cookie crumbs around it if you don't want it to look square. And then I've got a pre-made brick walkway which is a few inches deep and one, maybe one and a half wide, but again, the dimensions will be in the video description. And all the details for making this brick walkway, as a reminder, will be in my second accessories video, if you will, the accompanying video to this one that covers all the finer points. So I'm gonna move on to the next section, which is gonna talk about how I cut all of these pieces because they are custom cut for the most part, and some aren't even cut, some are molded. These heft hefty, Posts are actually molded because I wanted the arbor to have some girth and depth and look like a real arbor, so I didn't roll this out. But let's move on and I'll show you how to make all of these pieces with the exception of the brick walk. So in addition to the 10 cookie pieces for this project, which I'm gonna show you how to make right now, I did wanna mention that there are some non-cookie elements that are part of the primary structure too. Some fondant embellishments, or modeling chocolate will also work, like the little fence knobs, the fence slats, all the slats that run up the arbor. And we'll be coming to cutting those in a little bit. But let's first focus on the cookie structure and the rolled pieces. There are two rolled pieces, the ground and the little arches. The ground was just cut with a custom template. I used cardboard because I only made one of these. If I were gonna be making multiples, I'd create an acetate template or have a custom cutter made. But you've seen me cut custom, basic custom shapes before, so I'm not gonna cut this big one. I am gonna cut, though, these more unusual custom shapes because they are a little more unusual than the ground. They're actually what you would call a Franken cookie, which is a unique shape created from two or more cutters. Somebody in the cookie industry coined that term, I don't know who it was, but it aptly describes these sort of morphed cookies. So let's start with those. I'm working with my gingerbread dough. It's a nice structural dough for some, something of this size. But I think you could probably get away with a sugar cookie as well because the primary cookie pieces are all gonna be iced. And once iced, they have a lot more integrity. They're less likely to wilt or bend. Rolling about 3 16ths of an inch thick directly on a silicone mat. 
using about a two and seven eighths inch cutter for the outer part of the arch. And then I'm gonna cut a ring basically using a one and seven eighths inch cutter, but all the dimensions will be in the video description as well if you miss it here in the video. You'll notice I'm leaving everything, all the dough on the mat until this is fully cut, all the dough surrounding the ring that is, and that's to prevent the piece from misshaping. Now I'm ready to remove the dough. This one half isn't quite as nice as the other, so we'll remove it. But normally I'd try to fit more on a baking sheet. Now I can simply pick it up on the silicone mat without misshaping the cookie, put it on the back of a baking sheet and directly into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to be putting this side forward, this will be the back, but I wanted something with substantial girth more so than this cookie so it looks more lifelike. And the only way to get that without the cookie misshaping, to get a deep cookie without it misshaping is to mold it. So the key here is to pack this firmly down to the bottom, it's rather deep, but not so that it's overflowing the top edge of the mold. If it overflows the top edge of the mold, you'll get a really rough edge for the post and we don't want that. So I'm going to pack it in and I'm going to remove excess dough off the top if need be so that it doesn't overflow. One more pack and into the oven it goes. I know this mold is oven proof. Not all molds are, so be sure to check that before it goes into the oven. Often that's listed on the packaging. Once the cookies are baked and cooled, you can trim them to size. I cut them about two and a half inches for the shorter fence posts and four and a quarter for the taller arbor pieces. Notice how clean the edges are and that's a result of how neatly I packed them to start. So I've got a number of fondant pieces that are also going on the arbor, as I mentioned. You can also use modeling chocolate. It's a lot more tasty and it too will eventually set up, but it's a really hot day today, really hot in the kitchen. So I'm working with fondant because it's just um, going to set more quickly and be less susceptible to heat. Now those elements that I am making out of fondant include an embossed insert that goes in the center of the arch, little knobs for the top of the fence post, these are embossed or molded pieces of fondant in contrast to three types of just rolled and cut pieces. Narrow short slats that go over the top of the arbor connect the two cookie structures. A slightly longer slat that will be the vertical boards if you will on the fence and then longer slats that are the crossbars on the fence. And I purposely wanted to use fondant here rather than cookies for these pieces because I wanted them to be very, very slender. Cookies, of course, have a certain amount of heft to them. And I thought as I got to layering all these rails on the fence posts, it would be a really chunky fence. So to keep it slender, low profile, that's why I'm working with this particular medium. And the last fondant piece is actually a little rectangle that's been shaped around a square to form the basis of a window box that's going to go on one side of the fence. So I'm going to shape both of these two, one of these to give you an example of how that works because they're all basically the same, just cut to different sizes and lengths. Again, all the lengths will be in the video description. And then this. Oops, I've got another fondant piece to roll and pipe. I completely forgot about this one because it's so tiny and delicate that I had stashed away off to the side. So we're first going to start by cutting the fondant structure. This is a low-lying fence piece that's going to go around the front part of the garden and also the brick walk. So we'll start with the embossed or molded pieces first. So for all of these pieces, I rolled to about a 16th inch thickness, which is the number three setting on my pasta machine. So I'm going to go through this three times, starting with one and then ending with three. Now for this embossed piece, I'm just laying it over a sugar veil mat. I want to pick up this design in the corner, pressing it in, and then I'm going to take my rolling pin and roll it so I can see the impression just coming through the back of the fondant. Flip it over, carefully peel it off. It should come off without any dusting of the mat. So I'm cutting this with about a one and three quarter inch cutter. Again, all the dimensions will be in the video description. Removing the excess fondant and then cutting it about one inch deep. And this will fit neatly into the arbor piece that I cut previously. The next molded piece is the knob for the fence post. 
I believe this is the first impressions mold, but the sources will be in the video description. Again, you just want to pack the fondant, press it in firmly and pack it to the top of the mold and no further. And then you can simply turn it over and invert it. If it distorts in the process of inverting it, then do chill the piece briefly, either in the refrigerator or freezer, and it'll pop right out. Now onto the slats. We've got them for the fence, the arbor. I'm just going to show you one example, which is the vertical fence slats. The process is the same for all three pieces. Again, feeding it through the pasta machine to the number three setting. We have a whole other video on how to cut ribbons out of fondant or modeling chocolate. The process is the same. It's basically what I'm doing here. Gentle pressure on the ruler so that the fondant underneath doesn't move. And I'm going to cut these particular fence posts about 3 16 inch wide. You could use another piece as a cutting guide or measure off the desired thickness. In this case, they're 3 16 inch thick. A little tick mark at either end. Then line up the ruler. Again, gentle pressure on the ruler. Make sure you've got a clean bladed knife so you don't tear the fondant. And then give it a nice clean stroke. Now I've got this cutting guide I set up earlier, which you saw briefly. It's useful to have the length of the post marked out so you can cut them all to the same consistent length. And this applies to all three pieces. You just have a different cutting guide for each. I just drew some lines here on parchment paper. When you're done cutting, push them aside with the flat edge of your knife. That'll keep them nice and flat. And don't touch them, and they'll dry perfectly straight. Overnight, or even in a few hours, they should be something you can pick up and assemble. OK, so we're moving on to the window box. I'm going to use green fondant for this, because it's ultimately going to be covered with moss. I want the colors to match. Rolling to the exact same thickness as before to the number three setting on my pasta machine or number two, either or. And I'm going to shape it around a square cookie cutter, cutting it about a half an inch thick. My cutter is about an inch, I believe. But again, the dimensions will be in the video description. Cutting process exactly the same as before, just cutting a wider strip. Now you may want to dust that cutter with a little bit of powdered sugar because sometimes the fondant, if it's particularly sticky, will stick to the cutter and you'll have trouble getting it off. Then just drape it over the cutter and cut the sides back to about a half an inch overhang on either side. And then set it aside to dry. Again, I'd leave this probably overnight before I'd pull it off the cutter. On to the last piece, which is the tiny little fencing for the front of the garden. I'm cutting out a fondant disc. Again, modeling chocolate will work with about a 7 8 inch cutter. And then cutting it into a ring with the back side of a standard pastry tip. I'm working on a parchment lined surface. This will eventually become key because we'll be piping some details onto the arch. And we'll want to be able to remove this piece easily from the surface. And parchment paper is much easier to get royal icing off of than, say, working on acetate. So once that's cut, I'm moving forward immediately to pipe a little shell accent here with a number 24 star tip and a thick icing, very thick icing. Now moving on to outlining consistency, which is slightly thinner, and a barely perceptible hole in my tip to get really delicate lines. You can pipe any pattern in here. I wanted this to look somewhat like Victorian fencing. So I'm getting pretty elaborate. One last line. And then we'll swap icing consistencies once again to beadwork consistency to apply little dots at the points where the lines intersect and also where they hit the fondant semicircle. And then we'll set that all aside to dry and again Putting it on parchment paper as opposed to something like acetate is pretty critical. This piece is very delicate. And acetate, it, it's just sometimes trickier to get royal icing pieces off of it without breaking. Here's one that's dry. Lifts quite easily once it's dry.
Okay, while our fondant pieces are drying, it's time to whitewash and ice and detail the cookie pieces in the project. Or you could do the cookie pieces first and then do the fondant pieces. They both need a certain amount of drying time before assembly time, certainly overnight. So I'm going to show you how to go basically from here, the plain fence post, to the more detailed one. I'm simply putting three straight lines down it. We've got so many other details with flowers and things like that. I kept the detailing on these post pieces rather simple. The same concept's going to be applied to the big posts that form the arbor. Whatever I do here is going to also be done to these, just to put three stripes down the center. And then I'm going to make the arbor arch a little more elaborate. In any scenario, I always do ice both sides of the arbor. First the front side, let it dry, and come back and ice the back side because I want to give it enough heft so that it matches the thickness at the end of the day of the post. Otherwise, it'd be a lot thinner because, as you remember, this piece was molded and this one was rolled. Back to how I detail these two pieces. I'm going to work just on the smaller piece, and then we'll do the arch. And because I want this project to be viewable nicely from at least three sides, maybe not from the dead back, because as I said, I haven't iced the back of these cookies, I am just going to whitewash the front and the two sides of each piece. And if I want to go the extra mile, I could, of course, also ice the back. By whitewash, I mean I'm just sponging on solid white food coloring, not extended with alcohol or anything. And it's going to need to dry. I usually put this in the dehydrator and I give it a substantial amount of drying time and maybe a couple of coats of the food coloring because the first coat tends to sink into the gingerbread. And I'm not going to whitewash the back because I'm not going to worry about viewing the back of this project. And I did that to the arch piece as well and also to the large post pieces. The next step on the post pieces was just to top coat it outline and flood it with white icing. I've done that in numerous other videos and I have a whole other video on outlining and flooding so I'm not going to elaborate on that here. Let that completely dry and then detail it. Just some simple line work. This is much how I, I start line work when I'm doing needlepoint. I like to start off the cookie and I'm trying to go dead center so I'm looking overhead. With my first line I want it as dead center as possible. And I'll extend it off the cookie and before the icing sets, clean up any of these tags. Because if the icing sets, you'll more likely break that line. Now I want to come in on the right side and on the left side with another line. Then flip it. because I pipe left to right. So that is exactly the way I would also do this. Whitewashed, top coated, outlined. Now for the arbor, we're going to get a little more jazzy with line work and dot work. Still with my same outlining consistency icing, I'm going to do a line kind of right through the middle. Piping slowly so it takes a nice even turn. And if it's not perfectly circular, no worries because the addition of the dots will kind of round it out. Little flat spot here, could redo it, much better specimen. I'll put this one in the back and this one forward. Okay, so we're ready to assemble the front side of the arbor and we're going to do the exact same process to do the back side of the arbor. So we're going to be attaching the arch to the posts and letting it dry for a while before we assemble it upright. This is a kind of a precarious process, so again, make sure everything's well supported. I've got everything on cardboard. I'm going to start by putting the fondant insert inside the arch because that'll require a little bit of drying time before I can move it and then attach the post to it. And to do that, I'm just taking a little bit of thick royal icing glue and I'm running it up 
the side of the fondant piece that's now thoroughly dried. It's not at all flexible. And I'm going to slide it up, nestle it up into that arch. It just fits. I want to make sure it's not glued to the cardboard, though. And I think I've got some icing stuck to the cardboard here, because we're going to need to get this off. I'm also going to clean up any icing that's showing here, because we don't want to see that. And then I'm going to put a little rosette, I think, smack dab in the middle. I have another video about making royal icing roses. And this is a nothing more than an enlarge, enlarged bud. So if you go to that video and just make a very large bud, that's what you'll get. I think just think that creates a nice little embellishment. We do that twice and then set it aside to dry and then we'll be ready to attach the feet to it. So I gave this a little bit of drying time. My inset in my arch is now relatively secure, so I slid it over onto some other cardboards and I'm about ready to mount the post to the arch. The key thing before we do that is to make sure that the posts are in alignment, the icing is in alignment with the icing on the arch. You don't want a big disconnect there. And now we're going to mount that with a little bit of moist fondant. This was freshly rolled, it's still pliable, and I cut it into rounds with the backside of a pastry tip. It's always a little bit easier to attach dry cookie to dry cookie if there's a little nesting spot of fondant. It just gives these posts something to dig into. Actually, maybe I'll do this with the post vertical. Get some glue on there. And make sure I've got this nicely centered, both front to back and side to side. And I'll do the same on the other post. If there's any extra icing down here, we just want to knock it off. Though what's underneath will be less viewable when this is in the upright position. Got a lot of extra icing back here, which I probably don't want, so let's knock some of that out. Again, centered side to side, front to back. Now, we want to get these as squared off and as equidistant as possible because we don't want our arbor looking crooked at the end of the day. Put a little icing there and just merge the two together. Now we want some added stability at the feet because eventually when this dries we're going to pick it up and if the feet are wavering around it may break when we pick it up. So I usually glue a little strip of fondant at the base to add added stability at the bottom. This will eventually get covered with moss and grass and slate when we do our final assembly. But for now it's an added support, so I'm just tacking that down at the bottom. And I probably want to trim it to the exact length, the exact distance between the two, or very close to it. Okay, so just a few details to finish this out. Just to point out, I cut a very thin strip of fondant, maybe an eighth of an inch thick, and applied it about a little more than halfway around this upper seam and also over here, just to cover where I had icing before. And I tacked that down with a little bit of corn syrup. And then underneath, just to clean up that seam, I piped some dots. You could have also done fondant there, but I didn't want it so bulky underneath. On this particular piece, which I did earlier, I used acetate instead of fondant, but again, either or will work as the security system down at the bottom of the post. And you can see that once this is dry, it can be picked up in one unit, like so. So as the arbor sides are drying, we want to assemble the fence posts that radiate out from either side of the arbor, and to do that, I've got one already done, you can see, glued and all together, so that's where we're headed. To do that, it's helpful to have a little guide. These two horizontal lines mark off where I'm going to put the tops of these crossbars that we made earlier out of fondant. And I want to get the two sides of the fences as symmetric as possible, so I've got a guide here for one side and another guide on the other side, so when I get to the other side, I'll match the two up. And then the bottom of the post is simply going to line up with here. So back to a little bit of royal icing. 
and set it into place and just make sure those slats are exactly parallel because once it dries there's going to be no correcting it. Now I know I need a little bit of extra distance at the end. I've got it marked off with a little bit of pencil here to sneak this behind the arbor, to glue it behind the arbor. So I don't want to put any of the vertical slats into this zone here. So I'm going to have an imaginary zone here as well. I don't want to be any closer to that. And in fact, I kind of want to mirror the distance that one is from there. So I'm going to just put that up here. And when I place my first slat, I'm going to put it right about there. If they move a little bit as you're applying these, there's going to be a little bit of, you'll have some wiggle room in terms of drying time with these to kind of adjust things. Let me just make sure that this distance here is about what I've got there. That seems pretty good. And I want to make sure everything's nice and straight up and down. If you wanted, you could leave a little more drying time before applying these interior slats to make sure the crossbars were solidly in place. But we're on video time, so we're moving forward. And now, before you set it aside to dry, clean out any glue that peeked out the front. Make sure it's all lined up and back in position, make any fine adjustments, and then set that aside to dry. We want to repeat the exact same thing, but in reverse mirror image, so that you get a fence post on the other side, like so. Now one slight twist on this I want to talk about in the one that I'll be assembling. I have my window box already mounted onto the fence and I just want to show you how to go about doing that. I'm going to do it to this one though it's not completely dry. Recall the window box started with this green fondant piece. So to get it from here to here I did basically two things. I first coated it with cookie moss which I did by painting it with a little bit of corn syrup. on the front and also along the sides. And then I sprinkled the cookie, cookie moss, which is nothing more than colored graham cracker crumbs. And then when that's nice and dry, you can just take your outlining consistency royal icing and pipe lines across it to create kind of a wire window basket, if you will. Okay, so then this piece is completely dry. Just be careful because these little royal icing pieces are fragile and I think it's going to fit right about yonder. So now simply a gluing process. I'm going to use white here and if it shows we'll come back in and pipe leaves over it later but for now we just want to mount the win window box that needs to be solidly in place before we put any flowers in it and just make sure it views nicely from the side as well. Now, once that's dry, you can come back, prop it up, and plant little flowers in there. These are some flowers that I'll be describing in my next video, and I just simply glued them down with royal icing and then used a small leaf tip, a number 349, to put leaves in and around it. So you want it assembled to that point before we put it up on the arbor. <laughs> So now we're ready to prepare the ground for receipt of the arbor. And there are a couple things I like to do. Since this is a really big piece and cookie dough can soften over time with exposure to humidity and this one isn't completely iced, I do like to reinforce it in various ways. One option is just to coat the back of the entire cookie with icing and let it dry. That adds some partial reinforcement. This has a certain amount of weight on it and it's somewhat unbalanced, more weight in the back where the arbor is. So I wanted to go an extra mile and actually also support the piece with a little bit of cardboard underneath. So that way it's largely a presentation piece. I can easily slide it around and move it later without fear of the cookie cracking. Now the first thing to do of course is to file it up square if you really want it to be square. Since this is kind of an organic construction I don't think it's so important to have it completely squared off, but if you wanted to do that, just get out your microplaner and shore it on up like so. I'm going to leave mine kind of rough. And the other thing I want to do 
you know, we will be putting a brick walkway down the center and I don't want it sitting on top. I don't really want it soup much higher than the rest of the grass. I just want it a little bit higher. So I'm going to carve out a place to receive it. So I'm just going to score gradually through until I, until I get all the way through. You don't want to cut really abruptly because you could break the cookie. And I'm going to do that around all three sides. And now that once I've got some guidelines down, I can remove the brick walkway. I'll just nudge that on out, hopefully. And just make sure our brick walkway fits in there nicely, and we're good to go. And now, just to reinforce it, I've got a piece of cardboard that's cut slightly smaller than, than the cookie itself, because I don't want it showing when it's done. And we're just going to stick that down with a little bit of brown royal icing. And I am going to coat it kind of all the way to the edges so that the cookie doesn't get soft towards the edges. This also helps to kind of keep the cookie sound. And then we will carefully lift it up and center it on that cardboard and then clean up the icing on top of it. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry and just continue the assembly process on one that's already been sized to fit this piece. Now my brick walkway is sitting underneath my cookie and I want it just a little bit higher. So in order to cheat it back up a little bit, I'm going to stick a little bit of fondant underneath it. And I'm going to just glue this down with the white icing I had out for some other tasks. It doesn't, the color doesn't really matter because it's not going to show. So I'm just going to put a blob here. You could roll out a, an entire sheet, but I think just two support pieces will be enough. But we'll place it in here. Let's see what that's doing. I think that's good. So I just want it slightly above of the rest because we'll be laying laying grass down here and we don't want it to the grass to be much higher than the brick walkway. And then when we're ready to firmly plant it in place, put some icing down and then we will just press it ever so slightly like so. <laughs> So we are ready for the most challenging part of this project, which is getting these arbors that have been drying, these arbor sides, up mounted vertically. But it's not so bad once you've done it once, so take a deep breath. As always, I like to use a little bit of fondant to hold dry cookie to dry cookie when I've got a, something that I need to have stand in place relatively fast and securely. So I'm going to use a green, little bit of green fondant at the base here because ultimately I'm going to be grassing over this and putting plants next to it so green is most likely to fit in well. Now I had previously marked where the arbor posts are going to go, measured that all out. And we'll do the same over here. I'm going to move them back a little bit because I forgot that I have this bit of acetate securing them together and I want that acetate to clear the brick walk and sit along, sit along this area, not on top of the brick walk. Now to anchor that in place, I'm going to use the white on top because if, I don't really want to get too much green up the sides of the posts. A little bit wouldn't hurt, but white would certainly be better. And I'm just going to then kind of plunge it into that fondant as best I can without pulling the arbor uh, to, not pulling the legs apart because I don't want it to break apart at the bottom. Now, I'm not going to let go of it. I'm going to further ice, I'm going to ice down the acetate part. So I'm going to support this from the front and back as I glue down the feet a little bit better. Okay, once the first arbor is 
dry and secure in place, it's time to put on the second arbor. The process is basically the same. We're going to anchor it with lots of fondant and royal icing at the bottom. You can never use too much. We can always remove the excess later. It's important though to mark off its distance from the other post as our slats are about one and a half inches wide we can really only have the columns themselves separated about one inch so I'm just gonna stand it here and mark off about one inch distance behind this post using an edible marker and I'll have that visual guide when it comes time to mount it okay so to mount it exact same process as with the first one I'm gonna lay some thick royal icing glue then some fondant on top and then a little more glue and we're going to submerge those posts in it using white at the top white icing rather than green so that it's less likely to show if it hits the posts and then very carefully submerge those posts into the icing and fondant blob remember those posts are fragile and make sure you've got it sunk deep enough so that the height of that second arbor is about the same height as the other And before you prop this and set it aside to dry, it's worthwhile to give a second check just to make sure that slat fits across the two arbors nicely. And then we're ready to prop it as usual if it's all lined up perfectly. So I've got this stabilized from front and back and also in between so they can't fall into each other. I'm going to put a couple of additional stabilizers in the form of these fondant slats we cut earlier at the top and then let it dry solidly overnight before I put on the rest of the slats and start decorating it. But this little slat at the top will just add a little bit of stability and prevent them from separating at the top. I don't think they would because they're well supported from the bottom, but you never know. And don't push too hard right now because these are not solidly dry. Just want to make sure that top one's dead center. As best it can be. And clean out any icing right here. So roughly about here. And here. Okay, so I'm just cleaning up some extra glue and that's how I'm gonna leave it for the evening so it's dry and stable. I've got the center one down and one off to the side. Of course, we'll proceed in a symmetric direction all the way down once it's completely dry. Good morning everyone. Yes, it's a new day. I let my arbor dry overnight. I also added a few little details to it. I also let my eyes rest a little bit to gear up for all the details that are going to go on the arbor this morning. Let me just start by filling you in on what I did overnight. First I let the arbor dry completely. I finished putting the slats on. I started putting the first two on last night. Same exact process. I also planted, if you will, fixed our fence posts in place. We created these yesterday and I just anchored them the very same way I anchored the arbor posts with a little green fondant and royal icing here and also iced to the back of the arbor. And I let them dry a little bit. And then I filled my planter with the geraniums that I showed you yesterday and I have details about how to make this type of agglomeration or blob type flower, which is simply a combination of royal icing and sugar confetti in my next accessories video. And I additionally started adding roses, little mini baby roses to the arbor along with some vines. And I'm gonna finish that out this morning as well as plant at least one side of the garden. I just wanna show one side of the garden. I'll probably do a mirror image or very close to a mirror image on the other side. It'll be all the same methods. And then lastly, I started laying some royal icing slate underneath the arbor. And we're gonna just pick up there the royal icing slate is nothing but a royal icing transfer spread onto acetate. When it's completely dry, I can peel it off and then break it up into little pieces. And these make cute little walking paths and little stepping stones, etc., for your gardenscape or any other cookie for that matter. I'm going to show completely how to make this in my next accessories video. For now, I'm just going to take the finished pieces and finish off adding one tiny one to the back of the walkway. 
reminder, the back of this project's pretty rough. You're seeing the construction zone, if you will, right now. It's designed not really to be viewed from the back, just from the front. If I'd wanted to view it from the back, I would have iced these pieces. I will, however, decorate eventually behind the fence post because some of that detail will be viewable through the front. So this is the back. It's not so critical how neat this is because we'll come in with grass later and conceal all these rough areas around the posts. But I do want to look at it from the front and make sure it views pretty well. It's kind of sloping off because my cookie slopes off. But I think that's okay. So I'll leave that as is. And that's exactly how I applied all these other pieces. They're now dried in place. We may use a few more of these in, as foreground pieces for accents, so I'll leave them out. Now I'm going to move on to continuing to add roses to the arbor. And for that, I used a little moss green outlining icing to create the vines. And I want to add a few more to the top and continue to add roses up and around the top. So I'm going to stand for that so I can view overhead. Just adding a few little vines here and there. And now for sticking down the roses, I'll use white, just because it's less likely to show if I overshoot. These little roses are made by the same process I make all my roses, and I have a whole other video on that. These are just tiny. They were done with a 101S tip. And they're all done naturally, kind of this pink color. But to create some variation and shading so they don't all look so similar, some were dusted additionally with a darker pink petal dust to give some highlights. So that's one that's been dusted, and you can see there's a little more depth in the center of it. And I've got some tiny buds as well. Again, the goal here is to have a mixture of elements so it looks kind of natural, like real nature, going up the side of your arbor. I'm going to stick maybe a bud here using my thick white icing, again, as glue. The green can act as glue, too, but if it sits and dries too long, it's not going to attach. And I'll be standing and sitting down to view this appropriately from all directions as I decorate. And just gently pressing these down. I don't want to press too hard because these fondant pieces on top are fragile. I think that's plenty of roses. The leaves will come next, but before I do that, I want to do one final touch on one of the fence fence posts, you'll notice this one has a little knob on top. If you recall, we made it yesterday out of rolled fondant. You can also use modeling chocolate. I haven't yet applied it to the other side of the fence. It's actually easier to apply that, or better, I should say, to apply it when it's in upright position so you can make sure it's perfectly level relative to everything else in the landscape. It's much harder to do that when it's lying down as we put together the rest of the fence pieces. So I'm just going to do that on the other side as well. Now that this is dry, I can pick it up without smushing it, and I'm just going to glue it there. Whoops! But sometimes that little bit of brown on the underlying fence shows, and I don't like that. So I am going to whitewash that area as well as we, as we whitewash the sides of all of these pieces yesterday. I'm just going to do that really quickly. I don't need, I don't need to pour this out in a container because I just need a dab of white on my sponge brush to do that. This is white food coloring again, straight up. So we're just going to dab that on. You could wait for it to dry, but you don't have to. I'm just going to glue my knob right on top there. Down goes my icing. And then I can look at it side to side to make sure it's level and centered. And I can also do it from this side. It's tilted a little back, so we just want to get it nicely positioned from all angles. Again, it's less important from this view, but if do people do catch it from the side, it'll be nice to have it level. A lot of this roughness we're going to conceal with grass and flowers, so again, don't worry about that yet. So that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to move on to a different color green to add the tiny little leaves. 
around the roses. I like to use two shades of green again to make it look a little more lifelike and give it a little bit more dimension. So we're going to use a dark leaf green. This is a mixture of leaf green and black. Same color that we use for the geraniums or something very close. Okay, so I've got my icing in my bag fitted with a number 349 Wilton tip, which is actually smaller than my 349 Atiko. So just choose a tip that's appropriately sized. The numbering isn't always consistent from brand to brand. And I'm going to add some larger leaves with it and we're going to come back with just a pastry bag, rather a parchment cone, to do some even smaller leaves. So I'm just pushing and pulling back to create a peak on the leaf. It's helpful to have a really a lot of icing in your bag so you have room to reach into the interiors of this project. So I'm just going to add a few more leaves to the front to finish it off. It's looking pretty good. And then of course we continue with the bigger 349 leaf tip all the way up and around the arbor to fill around these roses and then come back to this parchment cone for the smaller leaves. I don't want to do that now because that's going to take a lot of time. What I'd like to do is fill in the front side of the garden, this half, to give you an idea of how I did that. I'm basically replicating the one up in front. I'm going to be laying some ground cookie crumbs and they do make rather a mess. So I want to cover my countertop either with paper towels or put this in a larger cookie sheet. It's a little hard to work inside a cookie sheet, so I'm just going to lay this with paper towels and then I can collect it up later and get rid of all the crumbs. So I'm going to be planting these little lupin-like flowers. Lupin is a favorite flower of mine from Maine, which is where I have my summer home, in front of the garden. And I want to make sure my garden bed extends far enough forward to fit them. So it needs to come up to a lot about at least about here. So I'm just going to mark that or mark it right about here. And that's where I'm going to lay my dirt. Now I've got a relatively loose brown icing in here, kind of a thick flooding consistency, and I'm just going to lay it wherever I want my brown dirt to go. My green leaves are still a little wet, so some dirt may stick to them. I could have waited longer before applying the dirt, but we're going to move forward and I'm going to try not to dump any dirt on these green leaves at the post bases. And you might want to sneak it up under the fence as well and get it under there so that it looks more continuous and of course I'd continue this decorating through to the back side of the fence too. So there's a garden bed running along the back side because you can see through the fence here. So that's certainly plenty of icing and I've got nothing more than ground chocolate cookies here. We're going to spoon that on top, taking care not to get it on those green leaves. And you can be generous here, we'll, we'll brush it off later. I want my brown icing to have a little body so it doesn't completely flatten out and get much broader than the area that I piped it. So that looks kind of messy now, but if we take my pastry brush, this is why I line, lined the counter with paper towel. I can get a lot of that off. We may come in and take more off later. And if you want to even it up, to flatten it a little bit, you can take your knife. I am going to be running a little garden fence here, that little miniature garden fencing that we made yesterday. So I do want that kind of straight so that that fencing lines up. It'll lean up against that dirt. Let's see how that looks actually. That dirt looks a little high. Hopefully it's not too high for my fencing. Yeah, my fencing will sit right there. Okay, that's good. So now let's go ahead and plant those lupin that I made earlier. This is nothing more than a gluing process. They don't love to sit to crumbs, so you may have to add, you may have to dig out crumbs wherever you want to plant it and add some icing until the icing sticks. like so. These don't have to be perfectly straight up and down. You know, they can be, you have to dig out a little bit of that crumb there. 
Then that, then that makes them look really planted. I think I can get a one more in. At the end. So we're ready to put one more flower at the edge here. I'm hoping I can fit one right near the fence post here or directly behind it. And those are stems of sunflowers that we create in my accessories video. They're very, very delicate, but absolutely incredible and a real accent piece. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those and then anchor them in much the same way using thick royal icing glue. So here are the pieces I mentioned. Very delicate stems, all made of royal icing. But I put these together flat so, so that I can lift them in three dimensions later. And I am going to try to anchor one here, if at all possible. So I'm putting down a little more green icing as a base because it's a little thicker than that brown I was using. And we'll try to slide it in right here, just at the edge. Okay, so we're going to leave that leaning out, kind of bending out from the one side of the fence, and I'll probably stick a few over here and a, one mirror image one over there. So put those aside for now. And I'm going to continue to dress out this garden. The next thing to go down, we're basically working from back to front, because once I lay something here in front, it's hard to get into the back. So just remember that. There is sort of an order to operations here. The next thing I'm going to lay down is my little garden fencing, which we also made yesterday. So here we've got those very delicate pieces. I think I can fit four across. One, two, three, four, just barely. I'm going to start with the ones that line the garden path. And I'm just going to anchor them with a little bit of green icing because we'll be eventually putting grass down and this will kind of blend in with that. You just don't want to get it on your white. I'm facing the area we piped out so it's more viewable as opposed to in towards the brick path. And I don't think I'm going to get a four down the front as I did on that one, so we'll anchor a plant or something down in this corner so it looks more complete. I made my garden bed here a little broader than I did on the one up front. i to make sure they're viewing straight from the front as well. They look pretty good. A little irregularity is okay too. So now I'm going to put them running across. And I may push them actually into the garden bed a little bit so it lines up with the one that I just placed there. And hopefully I can get four across. The icing, brown garden icing, is still a little wet. So I'm sticking it in that rather than adding additional glue. And just make sure all your fencing straight or relatively straight from either view. There's a slight gap here. I'll probably put a flower there of some sort so it looks a little more uniform. And we'd, of course, repeat that same process on the other side. So the next step is laying the lawn. And I'm going to do that with a mixture of green cookie moss and green sanding sugar. And green cookie moss is nothing more than ground cookie crumbs that have been tinted green. I have a whole other video, my topiary video, that shows how to do that. I want to use a mixture here, though, so it has a little more depth and dimension. We're just going to do this side of the lawn. I've got a relatively loose green. It's a little looser than the brown I used because I don't want this grass riding so high as the dirt did because I want to be able to see the pretty little garden fencing that I just put down. So it's, it's r relatively loose. I'm going to spread it pretty thinly and then just lay crumbs over it and then brush many of those crumbs off, probably. So I'm using a spatula this time to spread as opposed to my pastry bag and also getting it a little thinner that way. And now I'm, I'm going to sprinkle first a little of the green sanding sugar. I thought this alone looked too much like AstroTurf. And I'm going to kind of push it in. So that's why I ended up adding crumb on top of it. And let me put a little bit of that in as well. This is the same, same crumb we used in the brick walkway, the same crumb here, which I show in my accessories video. And if I don't get quite up to the garden fencing, it's okay. I'm going to be putting some other plants in there, but I am going to try to smush it in as close as possible without covering it. 
And some unevenness of tone is good. It will just look more realistic. Now you'll notice I didn't get super close here or super close in there. Let me get a little more crumb in this zone here because that brown may show. But that's okay because I'm going to be putting some plants, some other types of plants up against the fence posts, the garden fencing that is. to kind of hide that seam, if you will. Okay, so the lawn is basically down and I'm gonna move on to a different type of garden planting in front of the fencing. And for that, I'm using another type of agglomeration flower. Remember, I called these agglomeration flowers or just agglomerations of royal icing and other things like sugar confetti. Well, I've got some here also made in my accessories video that are agglomerations of green royal icing and when it was wet, I just dumped some nonpareils, a mixture of purple and red on top to create these. And I did something very similar in my accessories video. And I'm just gonna plant those along the front to kind of hide the seam between the grass and the ground. Okay, so we're planting those agglomeration flowers, so to speak. I'm gonna cover that empty spot where I didn't have fencing with one big one. And I'm gonna put all the rest kind of down in front of the little fencing. So this is supposed to look like ground cover and a little bit of irregular, so I've got lots of different sizes and shapes. Some kind of creeping floral ground cover, I'm not sure what that would be, but I like it. I want to stick some of these ground cover pieces forward as if they're creeping out, you know, forward too, so they don't all have to be perfectly lined up. Now we'll come in with the rest of the little daisies just to brighten it up a little bit. You could use tweezers for this. So inclined, I find. I find that sometimes my hands are just as well. They're pretty dainty, though. The tiniest daisy, as you can see, compared to my finger, is quite small. I use a lot of flowers on this project, hundreds probably, of different types. And what I'll try to do in the video description is give you a, an idea of the rough quantity of each type used. Though remember, of course, if you're not up for this challenge, there's lots of complexity and detail to it. Any number of these techniques can be taken and applied to a much smaller cookie. So I love people to think about techniques when they look at my video. If they're intimidated by the massive scale of the project, then just extract those elements that are of most value to you and apply them to something smaller. Very easy to do. Now I've completed the front little garden bed. And the last step is to deck this out with some other pre-made plants and pots, sundials and other elements that I also show in the accessories video. So I'm just going to neaten up my workstation here and give you an idea of how you might compose that. Of course, everything I did on this side of the garden, I'd want to repeat over here. Maybe not a mirror image, but something close. Okay, so I've just cleaned up a little bit, and I want to talk now about how to dress out the foreground here. Of course, this arbor would look completely cute with the foreground empty, but I'm a more is more person, so we're going to load it up. I've got a one-sided view here. We're going to explore the two-sided view the completed project up here in more detail as well to present you with some more options for dressing out the front. But I've got a couple of here. This one is a little urn, which I cover in my accessories video, topped with a shrub, which I cover in my castle video, and also filled out at the bottom with some agglomeration flowers, those little clusters of flowers. And those will be talked about in my accessory videos. You could just place that there freestanding if you're doing a big tablescape, for instance, you might not want to anchor these down. You might want them loose so somebody could come by and pick it up and eat it, or to give you more flexibility in how you arrange things. If you don't like the arrangement, once you've laid it out, you'll have the ability to move it around before you plant them down with royal icing. Alternatively, if you're going to be moving these and transporting these as a project, or you just don't want it to get jostled and, and something to fall over, then I would suggest gluing that down with a little royal icing. Now, of course, that's blocking our garden just a touch. So if you feel that's too imposing, that might be something that then goes in the background and gets viewed through the arbor instead. And we could put a smaller detail like a sundial on a piece of slate in the foreground. And I also cover this particular accessory in that follow on video. So let's move forward to the completed project up here and review some more of those details that you'll learn in the accessories video. So a couple of things that I think are really lovely in the completed one that I want to point out. 
The first is in the foreground. It's the hydrangea shrub using those cluster flowers of a different type with a mixture of blue and pink nonpareils. We've got a three-tier topiary. I have a whole other video that shows how to put those elements together. It's composed of little mini roses and also little clusters of nonpareils. It stands on a three-tier urn, so something more elaborate than what I put in the foreground over here that's been elaborately piped. I'm going to cover all that in my accessories video. And of course, you don't want to miss the roses going fully up the arbor with all their leaves. They're just spectacular. All of these details are found, many of them in my accessories video, so I encourage you to check that out next week when it comes out. Till next video, live sweetly.